Hi, this is Eric Keller from Otoy. In this video, we're going to talk about rendering VDB files using Octane for Cinema 4D. A VDB file is essentially kind of a generic file format that can be used between 3D applications for uh, bringing in uh, volumetric or fluid data. So great for explosions, fireballs, uh, fog, and that sort of thing. It's actually pretty easy to use in Cinema 4D. So we're going to start by taking a look at just the basics of how to get a VDB file into Octane for Cinema 4D, and then a little bit about how to render it quickly. And then in the second video, we'll talk about how to actually work with uh, VDB sequences like this fire explosion uh, that I'm showing you right now, which again was rendered in Octane for Cinema 4D. So let's see how we can get up and running with a VDB in a Cinema 4D scene. So let's go to Octane. I'll bring up the Octane dialog. And let's choose Octane Live Viewer Window. I'm going to get some quick lighting in here. So I'll go to the Live Viewer. From the Objects menu, I'm going to choose uh, Octane Daylight. Let's do a quick render here and then rotate the view so we can see the sky and the sun in the background. I'll go to Objects, Octane VDB Volume, and this will add the volume to the scene. Of course, we don't see anything quite yet. We've got to change a few settings first. You can select the VDB volume up here in the uh, scene list, the object list, and then go down here to edit its attributes. We have two types of VDBs. We have VDB Loader, which is going to load a VDB file, a pre-existing file, or we have the generator, which is great for quickly generating things like smoke and fog. So I'll choose the generator and we get kind of the generic block here in our scene. And let's go down to the generate tab and we have a few options here. We have the random cloud, which cycles through various presets using different types of noise. So this is a great way to kind of experiment and play with different looks for your cloud. And then we also have the cloud one preset, which uses a noise texture. We can change the size of the volume using the size fields. I'm going to set the Y dimension to 400 so that we have 400 in X, 400 in Y, and 400 in Z. And now something more resembling a cube. The voxel size editor will reduce the size of the voxels, but it will also increase them so the lower you set this voxel size, the more voxels you get, uh, the better the quality, but it will also uh, use more RAM. If you lower this too quickly, you could crash Cinema 4D. So the default is three. Let's set this to two, and you'll see that this updates, and now it looks a lot smaller, and the detail is a bit finer. The voxel multiplier is also a way to increase quality. It does not show up in the live viewer, so you will have to take a look at this in your rendered images. But increasing this value is a multiplier on the voxel size, so again, it will increase the quality but also increase render times. Edge feather allows us to reduce kind of the cubicle look. If I set edge feather to 1, you'll see that it will update and now we've got more of like a puffy cloud. And the display type allows us to change the display here in the perspective view. The default is box. If I set this to none, then we'll just see the bounding box for the volume, which can save a little bit of uh, memory uh, when you're working in heavy scenes. Let's set this back to box. And then, of course, the noise option allows us to pick different types of noise. We can either edit the settings here that we see in the shader properties or we can choose a different type of noise. So for instance, if I wanted to use maybe wavy turbulence, you get a different look and so on. So you can experiment with these settings and see how it affects the quality of your cloud. If we go over to the medium, this allows us to change the uh, volume medium or the shading on the cloud. So there are two presets. There's the fog preset and the fire preset. The fire preset differs that it in that it has emission options. However, these don't do much when you're using just kind of a generic generator. They work better when you've loaded a VDB file that contains things like density, temperature, and heat information, and so on. But if we go quickly, let's go back to uh, a nice looking noise. 
and then go over to medium and uh, we can play with the uh, absorption and the scattering so I'm going to set the absorption to more of a reddish color and then click on the scattering let's make this a bit more yellow and then uh, we can play with the phase scattering phase and this will help to push those colors either either forward into the volume or back into the volume so we lower it we get more of a back scattering effect if we put it forward we get more of a forward scattering effect so you can see that forward gives us more of a, of a light colored cloud especially as lighting interacts with it at the top of the medium section we have density lowering this is going to thin out our fog making it making it less dense, it'll be easier to see through. If you lower it too much, of course, it's going to disappear altogether. Now the volume step length is set in terms of meters, so the default setting is four meters. If we have a very small volume in the scene, we'll probably need to reduce this in order to make the uh, volume visible. That's the basics of using the generator. If we go back to the main option and switch the, the type from generator to VDB loader, now we can actually load an existing VDB file that we've saved to disk. So I'll go to the VDB tab, click on the file button, and I have a number of presets here. So let's take a look at the, um, let's take a look at the explosion preset. And you can see as it loads, we have Kind of a big puffy cloud here. It's just a single frame so it's not animated but we can go down here to the grid mapping and kind of experiment with how the absorption scattering and emissions are mapped. If we go to the emission mapping you can see that this file contains density information, temperature, and we have V which stands for velocity which is most useful when you're adding motion blur to a VDB sequence. But if we go back to the medium now, we can explore some of the emission properties by click on volume gradient and start to play with the max volume of the gradient. You can see how now it's changing how this gradient is mapped to the emission of the actual volume. So if you want to know where you can get some VDB files to experiment with, you can go to openvdb.org, which is a website that explains all the, uh, the properties of the VDB file format. If we go to the download section, you can see there's actually a gallery here of files that you can download. And the one that we're looking at right now is this explosion VDB right here. There's also fire, a couple examples of smoke, and also objects which you can use to generate a volume. So that's the basics of working with VDBs in Cinema 4D. In the next video, let's take a look at how we can play with uh, sequences, VDB sequences, to create something that's more animated.